everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having an amazing day so far and for today's video I have something super special prepared for you guys. This is actually my first collaboration video here on YouTube and I had the honor of working on this project with the amazingly talented Dina Tollefson. If you don't know her or you haven't visited her channel, I'm going to be leaving a link down below in the description box so you can go and check it out because if you're here and you like my content, you're probably going to like hers as well. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I am super happy that you found me. Consider subscribing because every single Friday I share a new video with art tips, drawing and painting tutorials, and encouragement type videos for aspiring artists. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to click on that little notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever I publish a new video. And now I'm going to leave you with Dina herself, who's going to explain to you what it is that we did for this art project. Hey Erica, hello, and uh, welcome to my studio, Erica and all of Erica's followers. So this is my art studio, and say hi to my little birds, Grishy and Romeo, back there. I do a style of painting I developed called two, uh, in 2000 called Taoism, and it's a super heavy texture. Uh, I do it in acrylic and in oil. And Erica and I are doing this fun collaboration. I'm so excited about this. Uh, what we decided to do is something that we both enjoy doing, which is painting fruit and, uh, and flowers. So our challenge that we gave for each other is paint two lemons, one per, I'll just pick one of these purple flowers, one purple flower and, uh, and a blue background. And um, I love Erica's work. I have so much respect for Erica and I really like um, I really like her drawing skill. She's got this amazing, uh, if you guys have ever seen her video where she's just drawing a seated figure, just casually sketching that in it, so in beautiful proportion. And I also really like Erica's uh, attitude and her spirit and her kind and giving way. Um, her affirmation for artist video, if you haven't watched that yet, you definitely need to see that. So anyway, thank you Erica and I'm looking forward to our collaboration and thank you all of Erica's followers and I Hope to see you soon, and bye-bye. There are quite a few things that I love about Dina's artwork. For one, I really love her use of bold, bright, saturated color, which is something that I personally use a lot in my paintings as well. And I also love her harmonious color scheme that she creates. I think the colors contrast and play very well with each other in her paintings. But she also has this unbelievable way of creating this palpable texture and this movement in her pieces that is just very visually striking. Dina has this technique called daubism, and she sometimes even applies her paint with a spoon, which is super cool to watch. She paints a lot of flowers and ponds, and her paintings just really bring a smile to my face. They make me think of her, and they just transmit the sensation of who she is as a person. She's very positive, bright, and kind. Thank you so much for that, Dina. Let's get into the painting process. In terms of similarities between our painting styles, we both like bold color, that's for sure. We both love oil painting, but we also do acrylics. I have no idea if she's going to be doing this challenge with oils or acrylics, by the way. I guess I'm going to check it out after. I would also say that both of our styles have a good level of realism, but they're not too heavily detailed. We both have work that has a good degree of stylization and expression to it. We also both love painting flowers and we both love transmitting positive vibes through our work to other people and just bringing light into their favorite spaces. In terms of differences, I would say that I do love creating a certain level of texture in my work with brush strokes, but it's nowhere near as heavily textured as hers is. Okay everyone, so I'm going to explain a little bit about how I completed the painting for this challenge. So first I had a chat with Dina and after deciding on our subject matter, I went out to buy a few different flowers, a couple of lemons, and I already had an old table fabric at home that was blue, so I just went ahead and used that. This old piece of fabric was a very dark blue, but I used it nonetheless. I thought it would be a nice contrast with the brightness of the yellow lemons as well as a white flower that I brought in. 
I then went ahead and set up a photo shoot in my studio. I actually already created a video quite a while back in which I brought you guys into my studio and you see me taking pictures of a still life arrangement. Well, I did sort of the same thing for this one. I arranged the elements in a variety of ways and took a whole bunch of different photos and then I selected the one that I liked best. I then opened up a brand new document in Photoshop that had the exact same proportions as the canvas that I was going to be working on, which was a 40 by 50 centimeter canvas. And I pasted my selected image in that space. And in this way, the image that I am looking at as a reference is exactly the same proportions as my canvas, which makes that initial preliminary rough sketch that I'm going to start my painting off with a lot easier to sketch out. And this is very helpful because this is going to ensure that the different elements that I roughly draw out on my canvas are effectively proportioned as well as are effectively placed within the area that I'm going to be painting on. And then my first actual step in the painting process is I go ahead and stain my canvas using a raw sienna, which is thinned out with Gamsol. And I just do this with my blue shop towel in a very kind of uneven rough way. This doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to cover up the white. I explain more about why I stain my canvas and I go much more into depth into my Alla Prima oil painting technique in the video that I'm going to be linking to here and down below in the description box. So then I move on to creating a quick under sketch using a thinned out mix of raw sienna and burnt umber. And as I explained before, I make sure to sketch out the different elements in my composition in correct proportion and in the correct location within my drawing space. It's very important that this is spot on before I actually move on to applying color. So if you've seen any of my past oil painting videos or even my last acrylic painting in which I painted this avocado, you probably already know that I love painting a la prima and leaving visible expressive brush strokes. When painting a la prima, basically you're painting wet on wet, which means that you are applying fresh paint on a layer of paint that hasn't dried or that is still wet. I'm currently working on being a lot more confident and intentional with the paint that I lay down and doing minimal blending. Obviously, when you are applying fresh paint onto paint that is still wet, muddiness can happen because if you continue blending and blending and blending, those colors are going to start meshing together and you may end up with a color that you don't want. Something that often happens when we overblend aside from this is that we may end up creating a very flat area because all of the previous values and colors that we have laid out are all going to intermix and blend together into one same color and it's going to lead to flatness instead of a sense of form and three-dimensionality. So for all of these reasons, I myself am really working on preparing good color mixtures since the beginning of my painting process. I am really giving thought and observing my picture, my reference picture, to pinpoint lights, midtones, and darks. And I'm really doing my best to apply my paint confidently in areas and just leave those brush strokes alone as much as I possibly can. As for the specific colors that I used, I used a total of eight different paint tubes, starting with raw sienna, then I have also a burnt umber, Prussian blue, both cadmium yellow medium and cadmium yellow light. My green is a sap green. I also used this beautiful fuchsia Mexican paint tube that I bought in my local art supply shop. And for my white, of course, I use titanium white. And because I know that color is such an important part of making a painting look unified and harmonious, I only used these pigments to create all of my different color mixtures and all of my different values. And just to give you a couple of examples as to how exactly I did this, for example, I used the same Prussian blue that I used to paint the background with to create my darkest green mixture by mixing together this same Prussian blue with my sap green. I also created the different values for the flowers in the central part of the painting by mixing together my Mexican pink fuchsia color 
with my Prussian blue. And as with my other oil paintings, I always start from darkest and work my way towards the lights. For me, it's super, super important to hold myself, abstain myself from even bringing in the white until I absolutely 100% have to. I go more in depth as to why I do my best to be very careful and deliberate and plan when it is that I'm going to start bringing in the whites and just be very light-handed with the whites in general in my last oil painting a la prima video which you can go and check out if you're interested. Now of course for this painting I used a lot of white to paint the flower to the left as well as the lemons but it's very important that even in these lighter areas I develop a good range of values in order to give these elements a sense of form. I really enjoyed painting this Laurel still life. It's very different from the paintings that I have currently worked on with this very dark blue background, but I really love the contrasting effects that this very dark background and lighter elements created. And I'm definitely going to be using some of these characteristics in future paintings and maybe even create a series based on the things that I learned in this painting process. And I am super happy to share that this painting already has an owner. She reached out to me to ask me to save this painting for her since I shared the pictures on social media. So I am, yeah, I'm super happy about that. All right, guys, so I'm going to leave you now to enjoy the rest of this time lapse.
right everyone that is it for today i really hope that you enjoyed watching my painting process for this floral still life it was super fun to paint don't forget to hop on over to Dina's channel because I am sure that her version of this challenge is going to be absolutely amazing. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe because it really helps my channel get in front of more people. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and see you next Friday.